Yes, as tensions rise and global challenges mount, the decisions made at NATO Leaders Summit. And NATO members head of state continue their summit in Washington as they seek to boost the alliance's support for Ukraine and enhance their own defense and deterrence efforts. Voice of America or VOA correspondent Chris Kaskeo joining us now live from Washington, D.C. with more updates. Good morning, Chris from Jakarta, and we believe it's good evening for you. Yes, it's evening here in D.C. Good to be with you. So uh, we would just um, jump to the first question. What did the NATO countries say about North Korea, China, and Russia? Well, they issued strong condemnations of all three countries in the joint statement or communique that they released this afternoon here at NATO. Let's first, let's start with North Korea. They said the North Korea and Iran are fueling Iran's war of aggression against Ukraine by providing direct military support to Russia, such as munitions and uncrewed aerial, aerial vehicles. They went on to strongly condemn North Korea's exports of artillery shells and ballistic missiles which are in violation of numerous United Nations Security Council resolutions, and they note with great concern North Korea's deepening ties with Russia. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also echoed the strong language against China in the joint communique in his press conference at the end of the day, calling China a decisive enabler of Russia's war effort in Ukraine, and said Beijing continues to pose systemic challenges to Euro-Atlantic security. Stoltenberg also said that NATO and South Korea will strengthen cooperation in various areas, including defense and intelligence. He pointed out that the use of weapons provided by North Korea in the war in Ukraine is an example of how Europe and Asia security are now interconnected. Uh, back to you. All right, Chris, as you mentioned, it's about 8 uh, p.m. there where you are. So you just concluded the second day of the summit. And as uh, the NATO leader summit is entering its third and last day, can you share with us some of the other key developments that has happened during the NATO leader summit there? Well, yes, I should also note that in that uh, joint statement, um, the NATO alliance said that Ukraine is on an irreversible path to NATO membership. But they, Jens Stoltenberg, the secretary general, said that that will not happen until the war uh, in Ukraine that Russia started is over. And there were some other key military developments. The first batch of U.S. built F-16 fighter jets is already being transferred to Ukraine from Denmark and the Netherlands. And U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken made that announcement at an event on the sidelines of the summit. Now, F-16s have long been on Ukraine's wish list because of their destructive power and global availability. This fighter jet is equipped with a 20 millimeter cannon and can carry bombs, rockets, and missiles. The United States also announced that it will start deploying long range fire capabilities in Germany in 2026 in an effort to demonstrate its commitment to NATO and European defense. The United States and Germany made that announcement in a joint statement earlier on Wednesday. And then to cap off the evening, US President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden hosted a dinner for the heads of state and governments and their spouses at the White House tonight, and it's still going on as we speak. Yes, as you mentioned about Joe Biden, this is also one of the um, interesting and highlight from the NATO summit this year. Uh, the president returned to the world stage for the first time since his debate with former President Donald Trump. What is the latest on Democrats and whether they think like Biden should continue his campaign, if you can give your opinion? Asha, we have some new developments to tell you about. Late Wednesday, Vermont Junior Senator Peter Welch called on Biden to withdraw, and he became the first Senate Democrat to do so. Uh, Welch is the junior senator in Vermont. Uh, of course, Bernie Sanders, who ran for president in uh, 2020, is uh, 2016, is the more well-known Vermont senator. Uh, also, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said it's up to the president to decide if he should stay in the race. Instead of saying that he should stay in the race, and um, so observers noted that because Pelosi is close to Biden in age, and she's seen as one of his key allies and somebody that can really, uh, you know, gauge his thinking and influence his thinking. So far, eight House Democrats have said the president should bow out, and he'll face his next public test tomorrow when he gives a speech here at NATO, and he also holds his 
first solo press conference in months at 5.30 in the evening tomorrow. Back to you. All right. It's going to be interesting to see how President Biden respond to all of this, because I hear this morning even George Clooney is asking the president to step down to give better chance for the Democrats yep. in the upcoming election. So, Chris, back to the NATO summit. Today is the final day. And this year is also quite monumental. It is the 75th year anniversary of the alliance. So what is left on the agenda? Uh, just a few things left on the agenda. The NATO member countries are going to meet with the so-called uh, IP4, the Indo-Pacific partners that aren't members of the alliance. And those are Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand. But of course, the main reason that they're meeting is because of Russia's war in Ukraine and NATO's Ukraine Council will meet tomorrow with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. And that meeting is taking place in the early afternoon. And then, of course, Biden's uh, speech and um, press conference will conclude the official events here at the NATO 75th anniversary summit. Back to you. All right, then. Um, as we really wish um, and, and wait for the updates for the, um, the result and the joint communique, how it will go later on, we will uh, wait for your updates too on that, Chris. And meanwhile, thank you very much for updating us and thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, we'll talk again soon.